Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at the Palmetto State Armory PA-15 A2 Classic. You know, the current rifles we see these, uh, you know, smaller carbines with uh, rails and with optics and with, ray with lasers, with all kinds of attachments to them. It's nice to actually look at something that is just a basic rifle. Nothing, no, no battery story about, no rails, nothing heavy, just a 6.5 pound basic M16 A4 type rifle. And that's really what I like about this rifle the most, because this is basic. This is a no frills, work all the time, all weather. You know, don't have to worry about your batteries killing your optics. Just a, going back to old school, and you look at the 20 inch barrel, you're looking at what the rifle was designed around, what the gas system was designed around, where it's gassed in its, in its most uh, perfect uh, way. You know, that's really what this rifle is. So this is sort of a you know, a, a bygone rifle uh, compared to what we see today, and I really just like it. You know, the Pavelski Armory, I've had the opportunity over the last year to review several different rifles, uh, and we compare this one to the M4 carbine that I had, uh, you know, maybe six, eight months ago, and I've been very, very pleased with everything I've seen from Pavel State Armory. Uh, both of the ARs I've had from them, I've run uh, extensive amount of rounds through, and I've had no malfunctions. Everything has worked very, very well, and this rifle was no exception. You know, due to the fact I was more new to Palmetto State Armory, I'd probably put a lot more rounds through them than I have most rifles that I was um, that I was more familiar with, and I have not yet to be dis you know, displeased at all. Uh, looking at fit and finish of all the Palmetto State rifles I've seen have been excellent. No machining marks, no tool marks. Uh, they've been made very, very well. So looking at the rifle that we have here, we have, again, a basic M16A4 type rifle uh, with one real additional uh, change, which we'll get into once we get into, you know, the more of the internals of the rifle. You know, so we're looking at it's a basically a six and a half pound rifle, uh, basically a 35 inch uh, long rifle, standard M16A2. We're looking at a standard stock assembly, the standard A2 stock, um, which has the, uh, the glass foam filled nylon, mill spec type stock. You have your um, your butt plate that's checkered so it doesn't slide off your shoulder with your uh, compartment for a cleaning kit. Looking at the receivers, you're looking at standard mil spec 7075 T6 aircraft grade aluminum. You're looking at type 3 coat, uh, hard anodized. Uh, you're looking at basic features, uh, looking at the lower receiver. We see an A2 type pistol grip. We have a mil spec type trigger. This, this trigger here broke just at seven and a half pounds. Uh, little creep, it was exactly what you would expect from a uh, mil spec type trigger. We have, as you can see, uh, we don't have any ambi features. This is a basic M16A4 type rifle. Uh, looking at the upper receiver, uh, you'll see we have a standard mil spec type charging handle. You have a flat top mil standard 1913 uh, upper receiver. And what we have on top here is the detachable carrying handle. Now, of course, this detachable carrying handle can be removed uh, like any M16A4 type rifle, and you can mount any kind of optic that you would like. Uh, the carrying handle that we have on here is your basic uh, M4 type or M16A4 type. What we do have on here is the standard uh, 600 meter adjustable uh, elevation. We have a L-shaped aperture with a large 0 to 200 meter larger aperture for low level light and close quarter conditions. And the standard elevation knob on the side here. And of course, you can mount an optic on here as well. You have your, 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 your hole here to mount your, uh, your scope mount. Uh, looking at the barrel, we have the standard M4 type handguards. This is not necessarily uh, an M16A2 type handguard. This is a little bit thicker, more like a extended type uh, M4 type handguard, single heat shield, canted um, buckle ring. Now the front sight base drilled and pinned, F marked, uh, so it will match the mill spec of the upper receiver. Barrel. Uh, we have the barrel. We have a 20 inch 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel, standard mill spec steel. Uh, we have a light contour barrel, which is a standard government contour uh, for lightweight. Uh, one turn and seven inch twist rifling we have on it, uh, A2 compensator. And again, drilled and pinned is, is per mil spec. We have our sling swivel in the front. Um, we do have a melanite coated barrel. If I had to uh, say I had one thing I would have preferred and which Palmetto State does offer, they offer two different barrels. The first one you have is the barrel which you see here, melanite, uh, manufactured by Palmetto State Armory. They had also had, had sold a good number of these with FN hammer, cold hammer forged barrels, uh, chrome lined. I sort of wish I would have gotten one of those uh, instead of this one. However, for as far as accuracy was concerned, we couldn't complain. Uh, of course, uh, when we did test fire this rifle, it was test fired on steel. Um, 
yeah, my, my eyesight with iron sights is not that great, so I certainly wasn't going to get any precision groups at 100 meters with it. Uh, but we basically shot it steel out to 100 yards uh, with no problems whatsoever. You, know, you look at the two types of barrels, the chrome-plated versus the melanite. Melanite has not been well-received by military. I have yet to receive to uh, understand of any sales that have been made to military contracts with melanite or any kind of QPQ or nitrite-type barrel. You have, you know, for this barrel, you have a standard mill spec, which you would expect minus the chrome plating. Uh, same steel, uh, same one turn and seven inch twist with a cold hammer forged barrel. You know, we talk a lot about the differences between the two. My paintings on those are pretty standard and they have been for many, many years. Uh, the fact is, is the chrome plated barrel is stronger than anything else that's out there. You have uh, the, you know, the chrome, it gives you two to three times hardness of the barrel steel, so you have much longer service life than you do that of anything else that's out there. Corrosion resistance, uh, much easier to clean. Uh, the melanite, you know, for the most part, you don't have the uh, corrosion resistance for as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you know, the cold hammer forged barrels uh, versus the standard uh, military barrels. Uh, the cold hammer forged does give you, I think, an extension in service life, accuracy. I, tell, I tend to go with the, the button rifling uh, for accuracy because of the, the you know, sharp leading edge. Uh, that's where the U.S. government's always stood on this as well. Uh, why the U.S. government's never allowed the M16 or M4 to have a cold hammer forged barrel. They had always claimed that by having uh, the standard button rifling, you have a sharp leading edge, and that is a key to the accuracy of the M16 and M4 series over most of what's out there for other type of rifles. That's why the U.S. military has always said no. However, um, when it comes to durability, reliability, and longevity, without having those sharper edges, the barrels tend to last longer. Of course, you also have the you know the, the stress relief that's caused by the cold hammer forge process. Some manufacturers get around that by doing the cryogenic treating like LMT. But uh, for the most part, for a commercial rifle, you will absolutely have no problem with this whatsoever. Uh, the rifle basically comes, as you see here, with a Magpul P-Mag. Um, and... Uh, right out of the box, uh, there was the accuracy and reliability was there. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the range and we're going to see how it shoots. As you saw, reliability 100%. Uh, we had roughly 500 rounds through the rifle. Most of the ammunition was Black Hills 223 uh, full metal jacket. Of course, we did have some SIG ammunition. We did have some uh, Remington as well. Um, and whether it was 5.56 or 223, the rifle followed the cycle just fine. Overall, excellent, excellent rifle. Um, now, for as far as price is concerned, these normally went for around $700, uh, considering the way prices are now, they're probably significantly higher than that. But the prices that these things were, you know, all the Pell Metal State Army rifles were generally around that six, seven hundred mark. They've kept it affordable and kept the quality up there. So anybody, regardless of your economic situation, you could afford a rifle to, you know, to defend yourself for target shooting for wherever you wanted. The quality has always been there uh, with the durability and reliability. You know, the bolt carriers we have on these things, again, all high quality mill spec. Uh, this particular rifle comes with a standard chrome lined. 
bolt carrier. Gear is made of A620 stainless steel. The bolt carpenter 158 mil spec. Now Palmetto State does offer you know melanite type uh, coated bolt carrier groups as well. This one didn't come with that. This one came with a standard uh, type military grade uh, bolt carrier group. So what you're getting for that price is a lot of rifle. Uh, there's no question. Magazine uh, interchangeability. We had several magazines. We had uh, we had everything from Magpul, Lancer, DNH Tactical, C Products Defense, uh, the standard uh, USGI, with no problems whatsoever with anything. So overall, this rifle here, basic, works. It's, it's simplicity at its finest, and uh, it's an excellent buy. Uh, unfortunately, most of the things on Palmetto State right now are, are out, like everything else is at this current uh, political climate that we have. Uh, a lot of things are very hard to come by. But those of you who are looking for a basic mil-spec rifle, or those of you who are Marines uh, who were issued M16A4 rifles, here's your basic building block to build a Marine Corps M16A4. All you're going to do is replace the handguard with a uh, with an M5 RAS, and you're going to throw on a ACOG, and basically you have your Marine Corps issue rifle. Army, the Army wasn't issued as many of these. They did buy some. Mostly it was M4, but a very easy rifle for you to build a clone off of as well of an Army M16A4 rifle. Primarily it's the same rifle, just some different optics. But uh, overall, excellent rifle. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share.